Great, so uh, my name is Jessica Stunz. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at St. Mary's and um, I'm pleased to have a few of our um, very own members of our integral um, program with us today. Um, first and foremost, we have one of our faculty members from the, the program. His name um, is Professor uh, Joseph Zepeda. Um, next, we have two current students in the program as well. Um, we have Lane Corfield and William Roosh. Um, so these are three of our members of our St. Mary's community who will be speaking with us today. Um, this is really a chance for them to share a bit about um, the program itself, um, how it is distinguished and different than um, many of the majors at St. Mary's. Um, and at the end, we'll be fielding questions and answers. So in your, your Zoom um, platform, you'll see that there's a chat option. Um, you are able to submit questions to me, and then I will be the one moderating the questions at the end. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to our integral folks, and we will get started here. All right, hello everybody. Jessica, is that working? Yes, looks good. All right, um, thank you for joining us. So I'm Professor Joseph Zepeda, professor at St. Mary's College, but within the integral program, we call ourselves tutors because, well, I'll explain that as we go along if, if you haven't already heard about that. Um, and with me are two of our current students. Uh, Lane Corfield is a senior. Lane, do you wanna say hi? Hi. <laughs> All right, thank you, Lane. Um, and Will Roush is a sophomore. Hello. Okay, so thank you to you two for joining us. Um, I will go ahead and just spend a few minutes talking about the program generally, and then I will kick it out at various points to Lane and Will to give um, some of their experience as students in the integral program. Um, and then we'll go to questions. So I'm gonna to try to keep the, the presenting part of this pretty brief so that we can have as much time as possible for questions, because I think that will probably be more helpful. It's certainly more in spirit with the integral program. We don't really give lectures, so I'm not, I'm, it's not even my comfort zone. So um, yeah, um, I will share uh, a PowerPoint with you. Let's see. You just share your, share your screen, right? I'm just pulling up which window I want to share. All right. So the integral program is, um, it's a whole curriculum. We talk about it as a major at St. Mary's because if you ask Will or Lane, what's your major, they'll say integral and that will be the true answer. But in some ways, in a lot of ways, integral is not exactly a major, it's more of a whole curriculum. So rather than being your major courses, your core courses and your elective courses, it's like, how about one big package that all makes sense together and all fits together? Um, that's really the idea of the integral program or part of the idea of the integral program um, and part of what its name is about. So integral, sort of an odd name. It used to be called the Integrated Liberal Arts Program. Um, that became confusing for historical reasons and it got changed to integral. But the idea is that it all fits together as a whole. That's really the point here. Um, now let me see. Okay, sorry, just getting used to certain aspects of the screen sharing here. Um, two big features here of the integral curriculum and pedagogy. Um, every class is a discussion class. So it's either an, a, a very freewheeling kind of open-ended discussion class moderated by one of the tutors. That's what we call ourselves, the professors, we call ourselves tutors within the program because we're not lecturing or professing from our expertise, even though we have expertise in some area of scholarship, that's not what our teaching in Integral is about. It's about facilitating inquiry that's driven equally by the students, um, where we're sort of model learners and guides in the classroom rather than professors in that sense. So every class is built around discussion um, and that can be format formatted in different ways depending on the class and the topic and the text at hand, but it's always built around student discussion. Um, and every reading is a primary source. Now, what does that mean? So it means it's an original text from the history of one of the major areas of human thought. Um, so you won't find textbooks, with one exception, you won't find textbooks in the integral curriculum. You'll find sort of original works that made a historical 
difference in the development of human thought in that field. Um, not sort of a summary of where is the field right now, but rather what are, who are the major thinkers that made that field be what it is now um, over the past centuries and millennia. Um, this slide is a little busy, so I'm going to spend a little time here. Um, this gives a general overview of the different pieces of our curriculum. Um, so Integral is the four-year curriculum, and it's all in a sort of set sequence. Uh, in every semester, so in eight semesters, there is a seminar course, there is a mathematics course, and there is a language course. Um, also, in four out of the eight semesters, there is a laboratory, and in one out of the eight semesters, there is a music course, which has some things in common with the lab, as I'll, as I'll get to in a second. So you can see that this is a large number of courses. This is, this is more than a typical major would have, um, but it's, it's also covering a wide variety of subjects and topics and ways of thinking. Um, so again, a whole curriculum rather than a sort of menu of, of options here and there, it's all sort of a coherent sort of chef's menu uh, sort of way of having an, a meal, if that makes sense as an analogy. Um, okay, so the seminar. In the seminar, uh, as in the curriculum generally, the, the reading list is more or less chronological. So we're starting with mainly ancient Greek texts, really the ancient Mediterranean world um, and the ancient Near East. Um, and then all the way up to the 19th and 20th centuries. And the works in seminar are philosophical, <clears throat> historical, theological, scriptural, um, psychological, uh, social theory of various kinds, um, political theory. Um, so everything from Homer and Sappho and Aristotle and Plato to uh, Shakespeare, Chaucer, St. Augustine, Aquinas, to Locke, Rousseau, Kant, uh, Tolstoy, Jane Austen. Yeah, thank you, Lane. Um, I'm going to move quickly through this slide. Sorry, I, won't, I don't want to try to list all the things in the seminar. I can share a, share a version of our seminar reading list in a, in a few minutes. Um, in mathematics, similarly, it's chronological. Um, so students here are demonstrating from actual works in the history of mathematics, starting with Euclid's elements, so kind of the first comprehensive uh, synthesis of deductive geometry um, that we have pretty much in world history. Um, working with Euclid's elements for most of the freshman year, they moved to mathematical astronomy uh, and uh, more advanced analytic geometry in the going from the Greeks up into the Renaissance period in the sophomore year. In the junior year, they get really challenged with uh, Isaac Newton's Principia and uh, the development of calculus. In the senior year, it's um, more abstract approaches to geometry, it's non-Euclidean geometry, it's a little bit on uh, special and general theory of relativity from Einstein, and sometimes some readings on basic concepts in quantum theory. Um, so again, a chronological tour through, uh, immersive tour, I guess you could say, through great works in the history of mathematics. Um, so it's a little bit more like history of mathematics, except you're not just learning about these texts, you really are reading the original texts themselves and trying to understand them on their own terms and stand on our own two feet, thinking alongside of those authors as much as possible. Um, language, a little different. So we start out with two years of ancient Greek. Um, and I can answer the question maybe later as to why ancient Greek, but I'll just hold, I'll just leave that as a teaser for now. Um, in the second year, it becomes sort of a hybrid between a second year Greek course and a immersive, close, slow study of uh, works in philosophy, mainly by Plato and Aristotle. So you're sort of putting that deep study of language into practice, um, reading those texts with attention to the original language. Um, the junior and senior year, we turn in the junior year to works in English, works originally written in English. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that'd be American and English uh, poetry and rhetoric. And then in the senior year, it's sort of philosophical and literary 
uh, approaches to the limits and possibilities of language. Um, I won't try to explain that further right now, but um, in the laboratory, the, there's a laboratory for both, semester, both semesters of the freshman year, the first year, um, and that's really about basic ways of thinking and investigating and classifying scientifically in approaching the natural world, often in conversation with ancient Greek authors, but also some early modern and Renaissance authors as well. Um, and it's very hands-on. So their students may, for example, read about ancient theories of how the heart works. They read William Harvey's discovery of the circulation of the blood. And at the same time, they're dissecting hearts. Um, and you can see that in the image there, that's what's going on. Um, or they're reading Archimedes on equilibrium while they're making their own system of weight measurements from scratch by hand. Um, or they're reading, uh, reading, starting to read a little bit of ancient astronomy while they're also going out and doing stargazing and, and learning how pre-telescopes and pre-computers and pre-software simulations, people figured out what was going on in the sky. Um, and that continues in the junior year with two semesters of laboratory. The first semester is on uh, breakthroughs in early modern physics and the development of the atomic theory in chemistry. And the second semester is on evolution and genetics from Darwin to the double helix. So the big theme here is trying to follow, <coughs> excuse me, the major areas of human thought chronologically by immersive reading and close discussion of the important or the most important text or a selection of the most important texts in those fields. Last but not least, we have music. <clears throat> this is one semester in the sophomore year. And here students, um, the hands-on element is mainly that they have to sing together, whether they're used to that or not. Um, and they're reading historical texts in music theory and harmonics and counterpoint and so on. Um, so that's a lot of fun, and I, I think the students will vouch for me that that, that part is a lot of fun. It is. Okay. I nice. agree. Okay, great. I'm going to move on here. All right, so a lot of people wonder, what do you do with integral? What do you do with an integral degree after you graduate? Um, I'll go to the student perspective in a second. Um, this slide gives just a basic overview. About 700, over 700 alumni. Uh, about half of them went on to some further study, some kind of degree, whether that's a law degree, a medical degree in some, some minority of cases, um, an MBA, a business degree, some kind of professional degree, or an academic degree, a PhD uh, uh, or a master's. Um, and then others just go straight into the workforce. They find some area they're interested in, um, or they do volunteer work first, or they get into the nonprofit world. Um, but that's sort of a big picture breakdown here. Um, this list on the right side of the slide gives you in order uh, the major categories that our alumni have, have gone into. Business is kind of a big miscellaneous category, so that's perhaps not surprising that that would be number one. Um, a lot of educators at every level, so that's from kindergarten, Montessori, elementary, high school teachers, as well as a lot of PhDs, and a lot of master's degrees. So a lot have gone on into higher ed. Um, quite a few professors have come out of the integral program. Um, attorneys, there's always some students interested in law coming out of integral, and that's a natural fit with the kind of skill building that we're doing and the practice in close reading and argumentation, in both in writing and in speech and conversation. Um, so that's that's always been present and continues to be a minority of our students, but a substantial um, and consistent minority of our students have gone into law and done well there. Um, and then a lot of people in the last couple decades, especially last decade, especially going into the tech world in one way or another. And that I think is largely a function of where the local economy has gone in the Bay Area and Northern California. But certainly we have students represented there, some with degrees after integral, some without who just went in and started learning things on their own and, and figured their way into, into a career there. Here are some actual examples, so not to talk so much in generalities. Um, some of these are relatively old examples, like from alums who graduated in the 70s or the 60s even. Um, some of them are much more recent. The ones in bold are within the last 
five to 10 years at the, at the latest, so, or at the earliest, I should say. Um, so our recent students have been getting jobs, yes, real jobs in the world, doing work, gainful employment. Um, and again, a wide variety of things. Um, there tend to be a lot of fairly entrepreneurial types, I think, who try integral because it's thinking a little outside the box and trying something different. And a lot of them carry that over. Um, I won't say we, we're going to take credit for that. That might just be who is adventurous enough to try integral. They might be adventurous enough to try things in their later life too. Um, but we have always had students as well who've gone on to volunteer, nonprofit careers, um, into law, as I said, uh, a ver wide variety of, of uh, uh, different types of work. All right, um, that slide got very small all of a sudden. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, these are some basic takeaways here, and then maybe we could go to the students for their experience a little bit after this, um, and then open it up to questions. Uh, the integral program is a four-year sequence. Anybody who comes in to St. Mary's as a first-year student, first-year undergraduate student, can elect to try the integral program. There's no additional hurdle for admissions, and it's not an honors program in any way. Um, it's challenging. It's a special community, but it's not an honors program in the sense of only taking the top students or something like that. Um, students do have to begin at the beginning of this four-year sequence. Um, transferring in afterwards after doing another major for a while is not typically an option. It can sometimes be an option after one semester, but it, after that, the door is closed. Um, however, it, that's not true the other way. So for most other majors at St. Mary's, you can start with integral and then move uh, into another major pretty seamlessly. There are some exceptions, which I can get to in Q&A perhaps. Um, those are the big takeaways, I think. All right, I think I'm gonna stop screen sharing now and maybe go to our students. Like, can we start with you, Lane? Lane, can you tell us a little bit about what got you interested in Integral, what the experience has been like, and uh, what you're planning on doing since you're now a senior? Yeah, so what got me interested in Integral, I actually, the Integral program has a summer program for junior and senior high school students called Talk Back to Socrates, and I kind of got involved in that um and how i really found that which is what led me to integral is that i'm from about an hour away from saint mary's and i was looking for schools nearby just because that's something i wanted coming into college um, so i found saint mary's and had never heard of the integral program at all when i was looking at their list of majors so i was just curious and clicked on it um, and then it brought me up to their summer program and i ended up doing that um, and that but what really made me seal the deal, I guess, coming to St. Mary's and doing Integral was really, I think, everything that the program stood for and the method of teaching in the program. Like Tudor's Pitta was just talking about everything is seminar style. We call our professors tutors um, because it is a more conversational and it is wholly seminar. Um, and I really like that. It kind of takes away that classic professor-student hierarchy. Um, and I think it makes learning a lot more of a community thing, which is something that a lot of people in integral value. Um, and so I just really stuck with it because I really loved that. I loved looking at the primary sources as opposed to a secondary source, like a textbook or an article about something, hearing it straight from the source. And especially when you get into translations, even that much more rewarding, I think. Um, and I've just loved it and what I'm doing next. Um, I'm probably gonna go, I, I'm not probably, I am going to grad school um, in history and philosophy of science and technology. And that's something I wouldn't have found if it weren't for integral. It was really sophomore year math and I hated math in high school. I was not successful with it at all. And that's like a big thing a lot of people are concerned about is having to do math for four years. But like integral math is nothing like high school math. It's way better. Um, and it's from integral that I really like found that passion pretty much and I'm gonna go and do basically a graduate an MPhil in history and philosophy of science and medicine. And where is that? Cambridge. Cambridge. Yes. In the UK. The Cambridge. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that one. <laughs> don't be too don't be too modest. All right. <laughs> Maybe we can go to you now, Will. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you found out about Integral, why you decided to join, what your experience has been? Yeah, so I was really, really critical of my high school education, and I actually wasn't even sure I was going to go to college for a while. 
I just was really, uh, I objected a lot to the kind of education I saw. And basically what happened to me is I read a few books, I learned a lot of things, and I kind of determined what I really wanted out of an education, what I really wanted to learn about, and how I wanted to have the freedom to do that. And then I had a teacher in high school who was an alumni of St. Mary's who didn't go through the Unigo program, who told me about it because he thought, A, it would fit me really well, and B, he thought it was just a really excellent thing. So he pointed to it to me, and then I, I chose to, to do it with a sort of, um, I don't know, I had this notion in mind of thinking, I can join and get a lot out of it, or if I don't, I can leave pretty quickly. But I joined, I found I love it, and I've really had a wonderful experience so far. It really, um, I don't know, engendered a lot of passion in me for the things I really wanted to do, and exposed me to a lot of things I never would have really uh, known about without it. So. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of why I picked it. It was a really conscious choice, a really um, active choice that was really presented to me. And I was really lucky to get it. And I think something important to note really quickly is that you don't have to not have liked your high school education or have not no, felt that it yeah. pro didn't provide you with what you wanted. Really what draws people to Integral, I think, is just like a curiosity and a love of learning or just a desire to learn more or know more. And just sort of just a passion to want to do it is I think the main thing that should drive you to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you say a little bit um, about what it's like going through a program where you're with a cohort of students? Because since it's a sequence of a four year sequence, you're with the same cohort of students all the way through. What, how does that dynamic go and what sort of environment does that produce or what sort of um, community? Hey, do you want to go over me? Go for it. Okay, um, for me and for my, my cohort, it's been a really familial kind of experience where we learn and we grow a lot together and we share a lot, I think, in terms of, um, I don't know, our common attributes or character. We've, we've learned how to be together in a way that's a lot different than I think you would if you were kind of separated and atomized as a class. I think you, you kind of get really, really used to each other, which can be sometimes interesting, but most of the time it works out pretty well. And I think that happens, um, across cohorts as well. I think the classes tend to integrate as well. It's not just like, um, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. They really do kind of communicate and then we try to get everybody involved. And it's really interesting to be a part of like a, I don't know, a community of sorts. I think it's really, I think it's really helpful, especially in a classroom. You can be, I don't know, um, you can be like closely related as friends and also very all trying to study well and all that sort of thing, so yeah. I totally agree with everything Will said. Um, being a senior, I've been with the same people pretty much every single day for the past four years. Um, and that's been a great experience. There are times, just as it happens, when you spend that much time with any certain group of people. It's like family, yeah. Yeah, you love them, but sometimes it's a lot. And so that's something that I've loved about Integral is that you do have that close community, but because of just St. Mary's in general, I've never had difficulties like socializing and becoming and developing really meaningful relationships with people outside of integral and i think mm -hmm. that's like a great thing about saint mary's and yeah. the program generally yeah i think it's really uniquely situated as a program of its kind in that it's um we're both like our own thing and but we're also situated in all of saint mary's broadly so we kind of get a chance to interact with people that are doing their other own specialized things and also with our own kind of uh, people setting our own kind of stuff. So it's really, it's really unique in that sense. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes use the phrase a college within the college mm -hmm. um, to, to get at that sense of a, a special community, but within a broader community as well. I think maybe Jessica, maybe it's time to open up for questions. What do you think? Yeah, this seems like a great transition point. Um, thank you for sharing what you have thus far. I think it's, um, for me, I think it's very um, sweet to see just the, the way that you all speak about the program. And I think it really does bring to life the fact that it is such a, um, a unique thing that we offer that is um, very St. Mary's. And to see Lane and, and William kind of giggling when they're, you know, thinking about the heart uh, dissection and, you know, different things yeah. that are a part of the program, I think that really speaks for itself. So, um, Let's jump into the questions here. Um, this is a great question. So um, this is coming from a student. It says, many of the texts seem to be Eurocentric. Is there anything from other societies and other parts of the world a part of the curriculum? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, 
I think it's fair to say that most of the texts in the integral program are, if not Eurocentric exactly, it was Mediterranean slash Euro slash North Atlantic centric um, as, as just a descriptive matter. That's not necessarily like an ideological choice that we've made or committed ourselves to, like there shall only be Western with a capital W text on this list or something. And there are some exceptions to that that indicate that, that we have an openness to that. Our practice has been to consider, consider um, widening the geographical spread of the, the reading list on a case by case basis. And that's something we continue to do. But also I think it is, has been part of the idea of the integral program in practice that, um, that the past as well is something of a foreign culture to us. So even if something is, um, sort of stereotypically uh, European or, or, uh, or part of Western Civ or something. It's a lot weirder than, than we might actually give it credit for. And there's a certain degree of, of um, you might even say whitewashing that's happened to that idea of Western Civ to make it seem like, oh yeah, those Greeks, they were basically just um, you know, British Americans back in, back in the day or something like that. Um, uh, when, I, when in fact their world was quite different than ours, um, radically different, and so it's it. Um, there are different kinds of diversity, um, many of them within what can be uh, uh, can be misleadingly characterized as a sort of monolithic tradition with a capital T. I mean that really contains multitudes. Um, but it's a good point and it's something we do talk about frequently and, um, as a faculty and the students are, are interested in that point too, quite frequently in, uh, in points they bring up to us, in suggestions they make about the reading list, in discussions we have with the senior cohort each year uh, as a sort of exit interview. It's something that comes up. And so it's, it's something we continue to think about. Um, there's also the question of, um, depth and breadth, right? So I think we have tended to share a kind of view among the faculty in the integral program, not that it must be all Western or anything like that, certainly not. Um, but there is a question of what would, what would the trade-off be if we were to set out to sort of radically revise this to just say, we're gonna go global and then fit it back together, having made that decision. Um, whereas I think we've tended to think it's better to hold on to what we have that that works to open up students' minds to want to learn more, and then to, on a case by case basis, look at whether the reading list could be broadened in certain ways on a case by case basis. Um, and I think that pans out if you look at what our alumni have done. So our alumni have not just gone to go study only white males or something like that among our academician alumni. Some of them have gone on to translate Chinese poetry. Um, we have a distinguished professor of, of Chinese literature um, among our alums. We have more recent alums who have gone on to study Southeast Asian, pol Southeast Asian politics. Um, we have students who are into slam poetry and hip hop and social justice. We have students who are uh, interested in uh, legal justice for for women and women of color, particularly. Um, so uh, that's I mean that's a several part answer, but I think I think it's a good point, a good concern, and that's I think ten, tends to give you can hopefully give you a little bit of a picture of how we how we have thought about that. Great, thank you. Um, our next question is um, kind of more technical. Um, there's been a few questions similar to this. So mm -hmm. students are wondering if you are signed up for, or I guess if you've expressed interest in majoring in something such as history, um, would that be in addition to the integral program? Um, and maybe with that, speaking to whether or not it's possible to double major um, with integral or to major and minor with integral. Yeah, that's a great question. That's a that's an important logistical question that our students and our and students who are interested in integral um, often think about and should think about. Um, integral is set up as a pretty comprehensive curriculum. It has, in most years, been possible for some of our students who are motivated to do so um, 
to also do a minor if they want to. And that's integral is compatible with a wide range of minors at St. Mary's if students can take a fifth course in at least a few semesters of their semesters of their four years. Um, so the basic setup at St. Mary's is students, full-time students have four courses per fall and spring semester. So per semester, meaning the fall and spring semesters. So setting aside the January term, students are typically taking four, four courses. In most semesters, an integral student will have all four of those courses be integral courses, but there are three semesters where they would have a, an elective slot that they could devote to some other, other subject of interest. However, there's also been in most years in recent St. Mary's history, the option for students, and this is the policy has been sort of in flux here. That's why I'm sadly unable to give a more definitive answer to this question right this second. In most recent years, students have been able, if they meet a certain GPA cutoff, um, some years that, that was relatively generous, 3.0, a few years back, it was more restricted. It was 3.75, but there was some kind of cutoff where if students met that, they could take a fifth course in any given semester um, and sort of overload that for no additional tuition. Um, if that option is on the table for a student, a, a wide range of other minors becomes possible, and even some double majors, though that typically involves some really uh, above and beyond above and beyond the call of duty kind of commitment sort of taking some summer coursework to make up some of that other majors requirements as well as overloading whenever possible as well as maybe transferring in some credit so so that that tends to be quite difficult to double major um, with couple couple majors where it's more feasible if a student can overload consistently philosophy um, is one right philosophy classical languages Classics. Maybe some cases, some of the modern languages, um, theology and religious studies might be closer to Maybe, yeah. feasible. Um, it's tricky. It's tricky to actually double major with integral. It is frankly not exactly set up to make that easy to happen. But some of our students are really motivated and are willing to go the extra mile. So we have had a long, we do have a long history of students doing that. But it's typically not more than one or two per cohort. Um, who really want to try that and who pull it off. And also um, a question that a couple of us have gotten before is asking if you can minor in integral. And that's just with the way it's set up, um, just the nature of the program and the chronological and sort of cumulative nature of it, minoring in integral isn't a possibility. Just to like put that out there since that has come right. up a couple times um, yeah. in other instances. Yes, thank you. So integral is sort of a... It's sort of an all or nothing thing in itself. That doesn't mean you have to stay with it, however. So students can try integral and keep, say if they're, if they're like, well, I don't know, integral history, I'm not sure. You can certainly try integral and still be on track to finish a history major if you do the first year in integral. And by the way, you get a bunch of core requirements knocked out because we're doing such a wide variety of things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for doing, for actually graduating with integral, it would be with integral as a major, and then possibly depending on what overload options are, pop, are available to the student, um, possibly minoring in something else. And in some cases, with a lot of dedication, possibly double majoring, but that's, that's tricky. It's hard to discuss that in general. It really depends on the, the student situation, what overload options are available, and then what the other program is that they'd be interested in, in majoring in. Wonderful, thank you. Our next question is, um, how many people are in the integral program, um, perhaps total, and then how many people are within each cohort per year? Yeah, great question. Um, we have some variation in enrollment year by year as the college does generally. Um, we typically in the last decade have had entering cohorts in the 20s so somewhere between the low 20s to up to 30 32 i think was the highest we had it's for an entering cohort in the past decade um and we've had one or two that were a little smaller than that so in the high teens um and then this last year was 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 a downturn year in terms of numbers um but Typically, we have 
uh, graduating cohort of between 12 and 15 students. So if you extrapolate that out, usually we have in any given year about somewhere between 65 and 75 integral students total. Um, we start with a little bit larger of a cohort, usually in the 20s, and then by the time they graduate, some have moved on to other majors. Um, so we're graduating more like 11, 12, 15, 16, something like that. Mm -hmm. So class size is typically reflected in that. So in the, in the first year, it might be half of a cohort of 26. So your average class size would be 13 or something or even less. Um, and then going forward, depending on the attrition in your cohort and the size of it and so on, your classes are likely to be between 10 and 17 students, um, usually on the lower end of that range in the upper division classes. Wonderful. Um, next question talks a little bit about summers and what students do with their summers um, in the integral program. So this question says, can you address what integral students do in their summertime? With the subject matter studied being so wide, it seems that summers would need to be purposeful to narrow down what interests the students may have for their future. Um, in addition, are there paid research opportunities available at St. Mary's over the summer um, in the integral program? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I think I will kick it to uh, one of our students who's done a couple internships. Um, Lane, do you want to talk yes. about your experience in all general? Yeah. Um, so kind of just going chronologically and those experiences you just um, asked about, Jessica. Um, I, there's a museum near my house. Um, that's an Egyptian museum, actually. Um, and I sort of have been interested, not necessarily in Egyptology, but in history and sort of museum work. And that's only been something fostered by Integral. Um, and so I applied for that and was offered a position there. Um, and I think yes you do have to be purposeful with it if you really do want to find a specific interest or just to try out what you think your interests are but in doing that integral gives you the foundation for pretty for literally anything you want to do um and so you kind of have that i guess going for you so to speak um and in like interviews that I've had and I've talked to like other people too, and I think Will could probably talk about this. When people ask you what integral is, it really gives you the chance to describe exactly what the program is and how it sort of is an all encompassing circumstance that you're in. Um, and to address the research thing, actually, last summer, tutors of and I worked on um, something co just coming off of his sabbatical to sort of pedagogical module of a 17th century mathematician. Um, so we spent a lot of the summer working on the text that he translated and sort of figuring out um, the text is about conic section drawing devices. So um, like metal bars essentially put together in a certain way to make ellipses and hyperbolas and parabolas. Um, so that was a really great opportunity. And that was actually um, sort of made possible through a research grant through the School of Liberal Arts. So there are opportunities like that through like through integral, but also the greater college. Yeah. Well. And picking up on that. Thank you, Lane. Picking up on that. The college does and particularly the School of Liberal Arts does um, is making an effort and a push right now to help students um, with career readiness and career development, career, career and professional development. Um, and that includes uh, a scholarship to help support internships that students might do, um, in, particularly in the summers, though I don't think it's exclusively in the summers. Um, but particularly for the summers, students who are interested in, in, in some certain area and they want to intern there, um, it may not be financially feasible for them to take an unpaid or very low paid uh, internship. And so the school has scholarships for such circumstances. Um, to help, that's that's as part of a broader push to try to increase the career readiness and professional development of students in the School of Liberal Arts, which is the division within St. Mary's that Integral is found in. Um, Integral doesn't, since we're not a particular research area, there's not sort of a standing set of research projects that students can apply for, because that sort of will, will vary on year by year as to whether 
any of the faculty have a research project that sort of makes sense as a student assisted project or something that students would be working with. Whereas in our School of Science it's kind of a standard thing that there are summer research opportunities for undergrads to apply for. Um, since Integral is not a research area, the faculty within it do have their own different research areas. Um, we don't have a sort of standard slate of those of those research opportunities, but I think my answer to the big part of the question would be yes, it is important for integral students to be intentional, intentional about what they're doing in their summertime and in addition to their summertime um, with their other coursework at St. Mary's and just with their with their awareness and preparation for you know for the world outside of St. Mary's when they leave. Yeah. Um, wonderful. So we had a few people ask the same question, um, which is a very popular question. Is it possible to study abroad as an integral major? <laughs> I'm going to let the students take that one because they both have experience with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lane, do you want to? Lane, you actually completed it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, so, yes. Um, it's a fairly new program. It's your spring semester of your sophomore year in Rome. Um, and it's through a program called RILA, the Rome Institute of Liberal Arts, which was actually founded by an integral tutor many years ago and his wife as a summer program um, in Rome. But three years ago, so my two years ago, my sophomore year was kind of the first year that that transpired. Um, so probably six of us, I would say, out of our cohort of 14 went to Rome. And what's really unique about this program, um, unlike other study abroad programs, is that you pretty much maintain your entire integral curriculum while abroad. Um, so we did a, the same language, the same math, um, the same seminar with the addition of a class on sort of the art and architecture and culture of Rome. So we would go to churches and museums and just really famous sites either in Rome or we went to Venice and Siena, um, Florence, all these places to really look at stuff like that and be in the place where things were written. And so a lot of what we read sophomore year is sort of ancient Roman Latin text. So it's really cool to read Dante when you're right by Florence, um, a lot of stuff like that. So that's really great. Um, and we'll actually, unfortunately, just returned. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was there. Uh, I was supposed to be there for the whole semester, but had to come back for obvious reasons. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience while I was there. So yes, you you can can travel abroad. Mm -hmm. And also, and I, oh, sorry. You no, know, I was. I think I was probably going to say the same thing you were going to say, Lane. That there's also opportunities yeah, sure. for travel in January term. So mm -hmm. standard part of the January term offerings. Um, and in Jan term, students are supposed to take something that they're just interested in. So it's not about fulfilling integral requirements or anything like that. So many of our students um, end up taking a travel, travel ex, uh, study abroad experience in the, in the January term. Um, there's, that's a little bit of a different proposition. Sometimes there's additional expense involved compared to doing it as a semester. Um, but there's also some scholarship opportunities for that. So that can still work out um, depending on the situation. Um, I think I think it's tended to be often uh, students in their junior or senior year who've got into some of those highly desirable Jan term travel courses. Um, and some of them have had really great experiences. Um, but yeah, for, for the semester abroad uh, picture uh the option there is one option for integral students if they want to stay with integral for all four years and that is they can apply for a rome semester in the spring of the sophomore year great um our next question is um more about uh admission into the program and um you may have spoken a bit about this in your presentation um, but this student is asking for admission into the program. What do you need in the portfolio and the two letters of recommendation? Okay, um, so the I, I think there may be a little bit of a two things getting conflated here. So the portfolio and two letters of recommendation business is about the scholarship at entry. So that um, that happens fairly early in the admission cycle. So we that actually was was 
has already been completed for this year. So for students entering in fall, fall of 2020, um, the scholarship deadline has already been already passed and those offers have already gone out um, for those entry scholarships. For just being in the program, there is no additional hurdle to admissions whatsoever. Any student who is accepted to St. Mary's as a first year undergraduate can elect to join the integral program. So the business about a portfolio and so on is only for this for that scholarship at entry application, which which has already passed for for this coming cycle. Great. Our next question is: How intensive is the course load? How much time is there for other activities during the day and during the semester? I'm sure this is a great opportunity for. Um, Lane and, and Will to talk a bit about um, other areas of campus that you may be involved in as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I will leave that for the students to take the, take the lead on that question. Lane, Will, you want to go, go for, for it? it? Um, sure. I mean, I don't, I mean, I think the course load is really what you make of it. Um, I think you can really spend as much time as you want on it. Um, well, also, I think there's, I mean, obviously a bare minimum you need to spend on it, but I think there's a bunch of time that you can use to do other things. I, for example, take other classes on the side. I also am in a club. I have friends. I do fun things. I have time. So I don't think the course load is too intensive, but I also think that it's intensive enough to really make me feel challenged and really make me feel like I'm learning a lot every year. I mean, I, I look back every year and I see a, a huge change in, the, in my understanding of things. So I, I think I have plentiful time to do what I like while also being, uh, I don't know, properly um, worked by the, the rigor that is there. I totally agree with all of that, Will. And I think, um, just a note on St. Mary's generally, there are so many things to get involved with, whether that's like official through a particular organization or just because of the campus, just to meet people. If you go to like um, a campus activities, a bo board event or a residence hall association event or something that you are able to like meet people super, super quickly. And you're able to like form connections like in integral and outside. Um, but I also think this might be like a good time to mention, since we're kind of talking about workload, um, what we have are called Dawn Rags. Um, and I don't know if we wanted to like really get into this, but just a quick note. So Dawn Rags are um, sort of a main form, I guess, of evaluation in the integral program where you sit with your tutors um, and they basically talk about your performance um, and sort of you in class. And they do it in third person because they're more so addressing the other tutors. Um, and they do that for some time. And then you have time to do that as well. So you can say really about your thoughts in the class. You can either agree or disagree with what they say. You can sort of ask them questions about the particular class or certain expectations. Um, and so that's really how integral, I guess, does a big part. That's what kind of governs the whole program, I think, sort of having that communicative flowing dialogue between students and tutors as a main form of like evaluation and conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. And thank you for bringing that up. I didn't, I had left that out of the PowerPoint part, but it's good to get that in um, somewhere here. So thank you, Ling. Um, taking up again, though, the question about sort of time and workload, um, the integral uh, ske schedule for an integral student in the, particularly in the first two years or the first three semesters particularly, um, it is a larger number of class hours than a typical St. Mary's course load. Um, so there's a little more time, uh, not, not a little, there's a significant, though not huge, increase in in-class hours. Um, but to give you a picture of what our students are able to do, so we have right now in Will's cohort a student who runs track for the St. Mary's team and is also involved in ROTC down at UC Berkeley. Um, we've had students playing on the volleyball team. We've had students, um, a lot of students doing rowing, um, student, a steady stream of students in rugby and the rugby team, which is quite uh, quite a good rugby squad, a um, couple of rugby squads, I should say, the women's and the men's. Um, and we've had students who have done, uh, who've been on scholarship for performing arts as well. And so they've been doing a lot of music uh, or in some cases dance. Um, so yeah, so I, I think generally the integral students are challenged. They have 
a fairly demanding um, number of classroom hours in the first two years. Um, but overall, they do succeed in doing a lot of other activities besides their integral studies, yes. Whether that's athletics or club activities or competitive speech and debate in some cases, um, or trying to put <laughs> together a minor or a double major or some, or some combination of those. Wonderful. Um, this next question is directed to the students. Um, they're wondering if Lane or Will um, have worked at all while uh, being in school. If so, um, how many hours um, per week, if you could estimate, were you um, able to dedicate to um, employment and work? Yeah. Um, so currently, um, I do some stuff with Integral, um, as well as an office on campus called SILSA. Um, which stands for the Catholic Institute for LaSalle and Social Action. Um, and I also um, worked as an intern at an art gallery for just over a year, um, junior and senior year. And I would say it's been fairly manageable to probably work during the week about 10-ish hours. And then on the weekends, probably another five to 10, depending on like how you can schedule stuff. Um, I would say for the most part, people who do work probably average around 10 to 15, um, just an in integral from my knowledge. I do know someone who works almost full time, one or two people, um, but that's just, that's not very common. Um, well, what do you think? Um, so my work hours are particularly light because I was a tutor. So I, um, I was a math tutor for uh, younger students in the integral program. And since there aren't that many students, there also aren't that many that need tutoring. So I, I, I think most of my hours per week were just five. I think I usually just max out at around five because obviously one hour of tutoring per one day. So five tutoring meetings a week would be a lot, but for that capacity of students that year. But so yeah, um, that's been my experience working on campus just as a tutor. And I'll jump in just to say that I, you know, in, in discussing with, with students over the 10 to 11 years I've been teaching in, in the Integral program, um, I have seen a variety of work schedules that students have been holding together. Um, for students on the upper end, I've seen students trying to, you know, trying or, you know, finding themselves sort of constrained to, to need to hold down, you know, even 20 plus 20 or even more than 20 hours of work per week outside of their academics that's pretty tough to pull off i think i think some could make that happen it kind of depends on the type of work and how exhausting it is um mentally as well as whether a commute is involved etc um i would think a more reasonable uh measure reasonable in the sense of reasonably compatible with academic success and, and not burning yourself out would probably be in the 10 to maybe 10 to 15 hours per week range. But certainly we have had some students who've done more than that and have managed to pull it off. Um, I think they would generally admit that it probably would have been a little better for their learning if they had, if they had, had somewhat less. I find that um, many offices on campus really do um, work around students' schedules if and when possible. I think it um, is so advantageous for students to work on campus if they can, whether it's, um, I mean, our Office of Admissions, we have student workers. We have student workers in the Recreation Center and the library and the Dining Commons. And so there's a lot of offices that do hire students and um, they really do, um, they are flexible dependent upon the time of year it is, what if it's finals week or um, different, factors such as that. So um, thank you students for speaking about that. Um, so that's we really a, are, oh, I'm oh sorry. yes, please. I was please. just gonna add one little note to that, that um, for integral students, I think it's been particularly the case that it, the how well a, a sort of work study balance works for them also depends on what sort of job it is. So in some, some particularly some of the on-campus work, some of it is really being on call, sort of manning a desk, manning a phone, getting, um, taking requests or helping people when needed, but during that time they could be reading for seminar, you know. So if it's that type of a job, it really changes what's possible. Um, mm -hmm. Students can do a lot more of that if it's also sort of doing double duty in a way. Yeah. That's a great point, definitely. Um, 
Great. So we're kind of getting to the end of our, our questions here. Um, there were a few questions that were pretty um, specific to individuals, and I was wondering if there might be a, an email um, for the integral program that they could maybe send those questions to. Um, what would be a good email for that? Absolutely. I'm going to send this to you in the chat, Jessica. Um, Great. As I think you can send me an email as the director. I think um, it's JRZ2 is the email prefix. It's at St. Mary's. So it's in the chat there now. If anybody can click on that or copy it. Um, some of the logistical questions, I think, or questions about other areas of study and so on, it really is best to take those up on a case by case because it's hard to generalize in a productive way uh, about those things. So yes, I'm always happy to take take questions by email. And if you, you can start by email and then if it if it's helpful and I'll you know provide a phone number and we can have a conversation there that way as well. And if anyone, um, I mean, I don't know if this is appropriate, but I'm just going to offer my email anyway. Um, if anyone wants another student perspective, um, you can totally email me to um, LTC4. Me as at well, St. Mary's. yeah. Yeah. Just literally anything about Integral or St. Mary's, um, whatever. I think both Will and I would be more than happy to answer anything about it. Yeah, I would be WDR2 at uh, St. Mary's. So, yeah. Anything you want. Thank you all so much for making yourselves available. That um, is great for, for these students. Um, wonderful. Well, before we end our time, um, I do want to just um, say that we do have other Zoom sessions such as these. So thank you for our guests for being here today um, and making time to learn more about St. Mary's um, in general. Uh, this evening, we'll be having a, um, a, current a current student panel at 5 p.m. Um, and then tomorrow we'll be having um, a, let's see, well, there'll be an environmental and earth science department um, a major specific uh, breakout at 12 p.m. We have a, um, a school of business breakout tomorrow at 3 p.m. and then another student panel at 5 p.m. So be sure and tune in um, and sign up where wherever you signed up for this one. Um, and we'd be happy to have you all, but thank you so much for our guests for um, making time and making yourselves available and flexible and um, these times that are very um, unpre unprecedented. So thank you um, to the three of you. And um, again, feel free to reach out to them with any um, integral related questions. I wish, I wish we were at an academic fair where you all had your little buttons to say, ask me about integral because those are the cutest things ever. <laughs> All right, well, it's still well, applying. Please ask us about Integral. I, I look forward to answering many questions. And thank you, Jessica. Yeah, my pleasure. Great. Thank you. We'll, we'll sign off here. Yes. Thank you all so much. And um, take care and stay healthy. Thanks. Stay well, everybody. <laughs>